If you want to learn the use of machine learning and computer vision in Android, then join the complete 2021 Android machine learning course. The course is available both on Udemy and Skillshare. Links are given in the description. So now we have tested our application and that application is working correctly. So we are displaying a live camera footage inside our Android application. And the next step is getting the frames of that live camera footage as bitmaps. So that later we can pass them to our machine learning model and get the prediction from the model. And in order to do it you need to move back to the story. And there you can see that we have this section converting frames into bitmap. And you have a lot of code here. So just copy all of this code. And after that move back to your Android Studio project and here remove this own image available method because the code we copied contains this method. So I'm gonna paste the code here and now let's look at this code. So there you can see that we pasted this code here. So that is the code that we pasted here and it contains this own image available method. So that's why I removed it. So firstly let's add the import for this code. So for this bitmap and then for this image. So now the imports are added so let's look at this code. So here you can see that now this own image available method contains a lot of code and it makes sense because inside this method we are getting the frames and the only step left was converting those frames. So here inside this method we are getting those frames and we are generating bitmaps from them. And those bitmaps are created here inside this process image method. So here you can see that when this method is called there we have some code and after that we are calling this process image method. And inside this method we are finally creating this RGB frame bitmap. And that bitmap is for that particular frame of live camera footage. So for each frame of live camera footage this method will be called and then we are converting that frame into bitmap here. So now let's look at the code that how we are doing it. So firstly inside this method we are checking if the live camera footage is being displayed or not. And we are checking it with the help of these variables. So if the preview height and the preview width is equal to 0 it means that the live camera footage is not being displayed. And if they are not 0 it means that the live camera footage is being displayed. And that is because we initialize these variables here inside this callback. So once the live camera footage will be displayed this callback will be executed and we are assigning values to these variables. So if they are still 0 it means that the live camera footage is not being displayed. So if that is the case then we will return from here. Or in other word we will not get the frame because the live camera footage is not being displayed. And if the live camera footage is being displayed then we are checking if this RGB bytes is equal to null or not. So this is actually an integer array in which we will store the bytes of particular frame. As our ultimate purpose is to convert that frame into a bitmap format. But we cannot directly do it. In order to convert that frame into bitmap we need to firstly get the bytes for that particular frame. And after that we will create a bitmap and feed or store those bytes inside that bitmap. And in order to store those bytes we created this integer array and its size is equal to the image width into image height. So its size is equal to the size of image. And we declared this array here. So keep that in mind that inside this RGB bytes array we will store the bytes of particular frame. So after initializing this value we have a try catch block. And here we are firstly getting the latest frame of live camera footage with the help of this reader.acquire latest image method. And then we are checking if this is processing frame is equal to true or not. And here this is processing frame is a boolean variable that we created above. And we created this variable because we only want to execute or process one frame at a time. So suppose that we are passing those frames to our machine learning model. So the optimized way is that we pass one frame to our model and get the prediction. And then we will pass the next frame to the model. And in order to achieve that we are using this isProcessingFrame variable. 
and we are initializing it to false and here we are firstly checking if this variable is true then we will close that image and return from here and it means that there is already a frame in processing so we need to wait until the previous frame is executed then we will pass the next frame to the model and now until we will set this variables to false no frame will gonna pass that check or we will return from here so after setting it to true, we are getting the planes for that particular frame. So there you can see that that is the code for getting the planes of that particular frame. And after that, we have this runnable method. And inside it, we are using this imutil class and we are calling its method. And with the help of this method, we will get the bytes for that particular frame. So inside this method we are passing couple of parameters including this RGB bytes array or the array in which we want to store the bytes of that particular frame. So here we are passing image width height and the image planes and we are passing this array and this method will gonna take those planes and it will gonna get the bytes for that particular frame and store it inside this RGB bytes variable. So this method is actually getting the bytes of that particular frame and storing it inside this RGB bytes array. And we are calling this method inside this runnable block. So this code will not be executed yet. It will be executed once we will call this image converter dot run method. So we are not calling it yet. So we just declared it. And after that we have another callback. And inside this callback we are closing the image and we are setting this is processing frame to false. It means that now the next frame will be passed from that check and we can convert that frame into bitmap or pass it to our model. But again we wrote it inside this runnable block so this code will not be executed either. And it will be executed once we will call this post inference callback dot run method. And after declaring both of these callbacks, we are calling this process image method. And inside this method, we are firstly calling this image converter dot run method. So this code will be executed and we will get our frame in a bytes format stored inside this RGB bytes array. And now the next step is creating a bitmap and storing those bytes inside it. So we are creating a bitmap here with the help of this bitmap dot create bitmap method. And then we are specifying its size and the type. And after that, we are calling this RGB frame bitmap dot set pixels method. And we are populating the pixels of that bitmap with those bytes or the bytes of particular frame. So here, when this line will be executed, our frame will be converted into a bitmap format. And now we can pass this frame to our machine learning model and get the prediction from the model. And after that we are calling this post inference callback dot run method and it means that that particular frame will be closed and now the next frame can be passed from that check or we can convert the next frame into a bitmap format. So hopefully you get the idea that here we are firstly checking if the live camera footage is being displayed then we will get that particular frame of live camera footage. And then we are getting the bytes for that particular frame stored inside this RGB bytes variable. And once we will get those bytes, we are creating a bitmap and storing or populating the pixels of that bitmap with those bytes. And now we can pass this bitmap to our machine learning model or use it for our own purpose. And now inside our next sections, you will learn to pass this midmap to our machine learning model and get the prediction from the model. So see you in the next lecture. If you want to learn the use of machine learning and computer vision in Android, then join the complete 2021 Android machine learning course. The course is available both on Udemy and Skillshare. Links are given in the description.